Well, it looks like you guys seem to enjoy the first useless information video. Not only did a whole lot of you watch it on YouTube, but it performed well on Reddit and Battlestate Games also retweeted the video. And when I asked if you wanted a part two, you guys made it crystal clear that I should get to work on round two. So here it is, roughly five more minutes of useless information in Escape from Tarkov. We're starting off with items, and hopefully this first one doesn't get me in trouble on YouTube. The horse statue is, uh, anatomically correct. Thanks, Tarkov. Game developers usually use placeholder images for missing or broken textures, and in Tarkov, it's none other than the beloved Doge. It's rare to see these days, but if you see him, it's a broken texture. Doge can also be seen on a wall painting in a Streets of Tarkov teaser trailer. The baseball cap features the Superman logo. The Freeman crowbar melee item is a nod to the Half-Life game franchise, named after Gordon Freeman. The CPU item is branded Let Me In. This may be a reference to the marketing catchphrase Intel Inside, which was popular during the 90s. The Red Rebel is modeled after the DMM Wales Red Rebel Ice Pick, which is now discontinued. I've tried to find one to buy in real life, but they are very rare and very expensive. The 50 round P90 magazine has an inscription which translates to, will be transparent later, a note from the developer that might have been left there by accident. The ghost balaclava and door kicker hat are nods to the Call of Duty franchise. The balaclava references the character Ghost, while the door kicker hat is similar to the boonie cap Captain Price likes to wear, and he's always kicking indoors. Around Christmas, we all get holiday cosmetics like the Santa hat and beard, but the blue hat refers to Dead Moraz, a character similar to Santa in Slavic mythology. Moraz brings good boys and girls gifts on New Year's Eve, so basically, a second Christmas. The Tak Kek trooper mask is obviously inspired by Boba Fett and the Mandalorians in Star Wars, but this item is actually based off of the Galactac Airsoft and Cosplay armor sets. I own one of these in real life, and it's on display on the wall behind me when I'm streaming. Nearly all of the cosmetics and clothing items you can purchase in-game are based off of real garments. Brands include SSO, Cry Precision, Blackhawk, True Spec, and a few others. The list is too long to go over here, so there's a link in the description to check out the wiki page if you're interested. The Alpha container is based off of the Pelican IM2050 Storm case. The LEDX real life counterpart is the Veinlight LEDX skin transilluminator, which can display hard to find veins. Two things to note, however, is that in real life, the LEDX is neither rare nor all that expensive. In addition, medical professionals have noted that the LEDX has limited functionality and doesn't really work well on adults or overweight individuals, and that it works better on children. And the Serve 12 surgical kit is based off of the 12 survivors roll up medical kit, which is now discontinued and is also not a surgical kit in real life. There's more items to cover, but I don't want these videos to get too long. So if you'd like a part three, let me know in the comments. All right, let's get to some facts about the bosses of Tarkov. Killa owes his appearance to a long running meme in the Rainbow Six Siege community, in which a cosplayer portrayed the character Tachanka while wearing an Adidas tracksuit. Rashala in Russian translates to dealmaker or problem solver and has no refunds tattooed on his face. Every one of Rashala's guards has the surname of Zavodskoy, which means from factory. And in two separate quests, Huntsman's Path, Justice, as well as Gunsmith Part 13, it is implied that he may have once been a member of the police, also explaining why his followers all wear police uniforms. On to Sturman now, his name means navigator in Russian, and like Rashala, all of his followers share an identical last name, which is Svetluzerski, I have no idea if I pronounced that right, which translates to Light of the Lake. I should also note that Sturman's coat is super badass, and hopefully we can obtain it one day for our PMCs. My favorite boss, Glukar, has a name which translates to wood grouse in Russian, but it also is slang for a cold case with Russian police. Glukar and all of his followers are tattooed, with the followers having abstract tribal tattoos, but the big man himself has one that implies he was a Russian Marine, either currently or before the events of EFT. His followers also have custom voice lines if they come into close proximity of Gluhar's dead body, shouting Glukar Suka! And if you don't know if he's called Gluhar or Glukar, either is technically correct. It's spelled differently depending if it's in quest dialogue or in the end of raid screens. And finally, Sanitar's name translates to orderly, or more loosely, a nurse or medic. And each of his followers' names translates to various fields of medicine, such as anesthesiology, dermatology, pharmacy, urology, and a whole bunch of others. Speaking of characters within Tarkov, here's a few tidbits about scavs. The phrase, cheeky breaky, is popular within Tarkov. Cheeky breaky, but sometimes scavs can be heard saying the full phrase, 
Anu Chiki Briki Evdamke, which means one, two, you're on top, which is a popular phrase in Russian while playing the game Checkers, where you stack one chip on another to make a king. The phrase is also a sort of slang to imply that you have an advantage in a situation. The phrase was made popular with gamers when they found it humorous when loners in the game Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl would utter the phrase. Opachki is another scav phrase loved by Tarkov players, and it is similar to the phrase well, well, well in English. Opachki. It is extremely rare, but your scav can sometimes come equipped with an SV-98 and a FLIR thermal optic. I got this loadout myself last wipe, and it was insanely OP. Occasionally, an angry scav can let out an extremely long, profanity-laced tirade, which is actually a verbatim Russian translation of the opening scene of the 1991 American film, Blood and Concrete. And last but not least, we're moving on to locations. On Interchange, the go-kart track has a few memes of startled animals on the billboards. The health resort on Shoreline is a nearly identical recreation of the now defunct and abandoned Strelna Sanatorium near St. Petersburg, Russia. In Western culture, a sanatorium is usually a facility for long-term care of the sick and dying, and sometimes the mentally insane. But in Russian and Slavic culture, sanatoriums are typically large facilities with elective healthcare services, such as spas, aromatherapy, acupuncture, and other activities centered around rest and relaxation. They also usually have on-site medical staff for those recovering from more serious injuries and the elderly. The dormitories on customs are a fairly accurate representation of low-income housing that can be found all around major Russian cities. These are similar to apartments or flats in Western countries, but the rooms tend to be smaller and spaces like bathrooms and kitchens are often communal areas that are shared by all tenants. Dorms like these are often poorly maintained, but they do sometimes have security guards, which explains the guard desks in the entrances. In Tarkov, the factory workers most likely live there. When you hand over a payment for items with the scav case in the hideout, the scav says Ponyatno, which means understood or got it. And when the scav returns, he says, not a bad day, gentlemen. On Shoreline, near the rocky hills behind the health resort, you can faintly hear dogs or maybe wolves in the ambient sound. And last but not least, there's graffiti on the Black Bishop building on reserve that translates to fruit underscore cake, good job, which is in reference to the Escape from Tarkov forum user who gifted BSG the textured models of various sewer manholes and gas hatches to be used in the game. And that wraps it up for this installment of useless information and Easter eggs in Tarkov. But there's just enough left that I could probably whip up maybe one or two more if you guys would like to see it. Let me know in the comments if you want to make that happen. I seriously appreciate the support from each and every one of you who has liked or commented on a video and also those who have subscribed. By doing this, our videos get promoted through YouTube's algorithm. And as you might know, it's very hard to grow on YouTube when you have a small channel. So every little bit helps. I'll definitely have more coming soon. But until then, I'm Jeff with EUL Gaming. Good luck out there.